Let's listen to the background for a minute. I don't know if the Michael picked that up or not. Minister Paul, Northern California, just kind of relaxing here. Wait for my wife to get home from uh, visiting her dad. Man, they're making a racket out back. I want to reflect uh, with, reflect on something with you here in a second. It suddenly got louder. So Gail will be home in about 30 minutes. It's 3.20 p.m. here in California. And uh, it's windy. She's leaving Bob. Uh, the update on his uh, the update on his stroke is as far as paralyzation, like on the left side or right side or, or anything like that, or slur of speech or even like uh, his mouth. There's like zero. There's zero paralyzation. He's kind of he's kind of light on his feet when he stands up, and uh, well, I don't know if that'll go away or not. But uh, and his cognitive memory is is uh, slowly coming back. But for 87 years old, he's doing great. I would consider it almost a full recovery myself. So we give God the glory for that. You know, we're all going through these battles and stuff. Uh, and I know I've been quite emotional on that. Please understand, my wife and I, we've been together this April. It'll be 25 years. And growing together in marriage earlier on, we both had lost our moms. Both were saved and they're in heaven and we'll be reunited, reunited with them. And it was it, it was a really, really rough time. And then our dog Gigi died. So our first dog out here was Gigi when we first moved out here in 2005. And, uh, and then we got Misty and Ruby. And so now my dad has been pronounced with stage 4 bone cancer that is spread from prostate cancer. And, uh, and it's attacking his kidneys. And he's he's 83, and Gail's dad's 87. And, uh, you know, we're to guard our tongue and watch our mouth, but I don't want a repeat of our moms. You, you know what I'm saying? Without really saying a lot, you know what I'm saying? And so I guard my mouth and I pray. And I'm very thankful. And I'm... I'm I'm extremely I'm extremely thankful that I have you all to be able to come here and talk to like family through the good, the bad, the ugly. We we come on here and we talk and we share. So the update is we're all doing good and it is well with our soul and we have zero complaints and we're as leaders we're in prayer for you daily. Um, what I wanted you to hear out there and reflect on this with you is. We have their building back there. Gail and I lived in Sacramento. Uh, we moved in together in 1995, and we got married that same year, 1995 in Sacramento, in a bad city part of Sacramento. And we lived there for 10 years. And then we moved out here 30 miles north of Sacramento to a rural, quiet country area and commuted and uh and we've lived here since march of 2005 we brought Gigi. she died my mom went home in 2007 my mom died i think her mom was 2006 or something like that then her brother and then my brother and, and now our two dads are, are ailing it's not easy walk you know but we're not on here complaining that's just why you see me get a little emotional from time to time, that's all. But both both our dads are doing well, praise God. And, and God's will be done. God's kingdom come, God's will be done. You know, as you get older, you start losing family members. It's a fact of life. And we feel sorry for the ones who are younger, like my, my two nephews who lost their mom and their dad before they were 16. So 
Things can always be worse in your life than they are. And they have been for others. And so I look at it that way. Um, so then we got Misty and Ruby and they're both gone now. And it's quiet. To be honest with you, I'm enjoying the quietness. Because, well, besides them building in the back. Because uh, I'm excited. So I believe that the homes that they're building right behind us will be up probably sometime around March of 2020. So it would have been exactly 15 years that we had no neighbors behind us at all. And I'm telling you, God put us right here in this home at 1111, and we've seen miracles in this house. We had the bird apocalypse of a million birds fly over our house in the backyard every day for seven days straight. Those videos are on here. We had some type of Slender Man event out there with green LED lights or whatever flashing that went viral all across the world, even in Japan, and was being shown at prophetic conferences in Florida. Everybody remember that? All kinds of things have happened in that backyard. I, oh, I just, I got the Holy Spirit bumps all over me. I have literally, thank you, Jesus. I have literally heard the audible voice of God in this backyard on my knees the night before my mom died. And it brought me to my knees. It, I can't explain it. I, I'm not going to attempt to explain it. I have maybe before, but. I heard God's voice and fell like if I was just going to die. It was that powerful and strong. Just a mere man could, and I'm sure he, he wasn't even like looking at me. I mean, for me to even be able to stand one granule of sand of his presence almost killed me in the flesh. He's that powerful our creator and he's that loving and so now come next year 2020 i've been reflecting on this we're not going to have any more backyard anymore when i go to view in my backyard i mean we've seen sheep and goats suddenly show up back there and i've said and the lord told me feed my sheep and the whole back with sheep i kid you not it's all been documented on this channel for eight years now and now they're going to build a house back there so when we look out these windows and out this sliding glass door back here, no more view of all the things God has shown us. UFOs in the field and stuff like that. I mean, people who know, they know. It'll be a house. And I'm thinking, okay, check this out. So we moved in March of 2005. So seven years so March 2020 will be eight years. It won't be seven anymore of completion. It'll be eight years of new beginnings in 2020 in March. And I'm thinking, what if, can I just be allowed to think what if, saints? What if we could be raptured sometime between here and March? And I'm just reflecting on that. What if no one... Don't, don't let anyone on YouTube take away your what if. Because I ponder it and it's a beautiful thought. Everything happens for a reason in our lives and God turns it around for the good. As I pray sitting here, God's been dealing with my heart on a lot of different issues in the ministry and focus and on this and that and stuff and I've been dealing with one issue at a time, just talking to the Lord. I'll ask the Lord a question. I'll sit in my prayer room and I'll just wait for the answer. Patiently, one question at a time, one issue at a time. And during my free time, other than asking God questions or listening for answers, I'm reading scripture. Line by line by line. In the Living Bible. I'm in Corinthians. And I feel like I'm so close to him. I'm going to tell you it's a beautiful thing. 
And I asked God a question today. I'd like to share it with you. I see we're about 10 minutes. There's a lot of debates on YouTube about salvation and stuff. And I got to thinking, the number one thing every person needs to know in their heart right now at this exact moment before you go to bed when you wake up before the day starts i mean we had a school shooting here in california you just never know what's going to happen big 7.4 earthquake in indonesia when i got up this morning a lot of things i haven't even mentioned but as a watchman i see and observe and pray but i haven't mentioned them but i know they happen so you never know what a day is going to hold you know you could be woken up to be told, hey, your dad had a stroke, like y'all was the other day. You never know. And so I'm taking it day by day, moment by moment, in him, in Christ. And I'm making sure my heart is right. Not all y'all's heart. Not YouTube's heart. Not my wife's heart. That my heart is right. And I'm taking it one issue at a time. After serving him for a long time, I'm making sure my heart is right because I feel we're getting ready to go home. I really do. What if it was before March 2020? Here's the thing on YouTube. No one can say it can't happen. And I'm certainly not date setting. I'm just enjoying the fact that it could happen. And I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it can't. I'm not saying it won't. I'm saying it could. And so I want to make sure my heart is right when that trumpet blows, right? So the one issue that I came up with was, are you forgiven right now or not? Let me take the phone off the hook because I just had a feeling it was going to ring. And I don't want it to interrupt, okay? It's 333. 333 out here in Cali right now. Phone's off the hook. We need to know right now if you're forgiven. I'm, I'm asking Christ right now in my heart, moment by moment, am I forgiven? And so I graduated from that. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm acting like a baby Christian. I don't have a single problem with that. I've returned to my first love. I highly suggest it. The scriptures, the, the moments with him, the questions, the listening for the answers. And what I came up with is this question for God this morning. And the question is, how do I know if I'm forgiven? Everybody hear me? How do I know right now if I'm forgiven or not? Because if I'm forgiven through Christ, I got everything soon. And I get everything back I lost soon. If I'm forgiven. And so I came up with all these answers, but I took it to Christ. Because people can say, well, because the word says so. Or, you know, there's actual scripture. That says, if you are, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you of those sins. Mm. And cleanse you. In the book of Isaiah, it says, though your sins were scarlet, he makes them white as snow. I think it's in Micah. Where it talks about he throws your sins as far as the east is from the west into the sea of forgetfulness and remembers them no more. And that's written. And we know the, the, the written word of God is infallible. And then I start thinking, yeah, but there's so many different 
translations and am I reading the right translation and over a period of 2,000 years it's been changed so many different times words have been added words have been removed and all this I'm like how do I know I need to know God am I forgiven am I ready to be with you forever in the twinkling of an eye He stopped hammering behind me. Amen. And you know what the answer is? By faith. You know you're forgiven by faith. I can sit here and I can ask God all day long. Taking YouTube out of the equation because they have no say in my forgiveness. YouTube likes to get in your business. I'm telling you the truth. They've been getting in my business for a long time. Don't let them get in your business. This between you and God right now. You could ask God if you're forgiven all day for your sins. You could go by and name your sins one by one like I've done today. Name every single thing I could think of. And ask for forgiveness for it. But until I believe. By faith. That I am. You got to believe. So the answer. How do you know you're forgiven or not? By faith. And I bet you the disciples were amazed at this revelation. When they got it. I can picture them there saying wow. Because you know what they said then? Well if that's the case. Then Lord increase my faith. I have the Holy Spirit all over me right now. And I'm so undeserving. And so unworthy. But when you speak in faith, you can move mountains. I know I'm forgiven by faith. Please, if you've ever listened to anything I've said in these years and years of videos, ask God to forgive you of your sins. Specifically, ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins. Don't listen to what anybody else says on YouTube. Name them if you can. Think of them. Anger. Disobedience. This and this. I mean, you could ask a thousand times. You think God's going to be mad. How dare you ask for forgiveness? No, he wants to sup with you. He wants to, he wants to chill with you. He wants to spend time with you. He's your father. Ask him whatever you want. What better thing to ask him than am I forgiven as the door is about to close? And then read his word where it says that when you confess with your mouth, you are forgiven. And then believe on that. Believe on that. Because Jesus is coming. Believe on the one God sent. And you'll have the greatest peace. See, no one here can tell me if I'm forgiven or not. I can't tell myself if I'm forgiven or not. But his word says I am. And no one can change that. So confess your sins. He's faithful and just. To forgive you. I've done just that. And no one in this world can change it. I highly recommend it. Get away from YouTube. Get away from the world. Get away from your family. Get alone with God. And go over your life. Step by step. Making sure. That you're right with him. And don't let no one. Get in the middle of that. Just you and God. And then ask him, can I be forgiven for these things? Even the things I can't even remember or think of. Can I be forgiven right now according to what Christ did on the cross? Please. And mean it. Just like you'd be begging your wife or your husband for forgiveness after a very serious fight. That same fashion, but even more so. And then believe. 
of faith. You see, in the book of Hebrews 11, I'm reading it a whole new way now. I used to read it like, by faith, Noah, by faith, Enoch, by faith, Abraham. And now I read it like this. By faith, Noah. By faith, Enoch. By faith, Sarah. Want to know if you're forgiven? By faith. See, it wasn't the acts. It wasn't the acts that they were doing in Hebrews 11. It was the faith they had that led them to do it. Wow. God bless you. Love you. Please keep me in your prayers and you'll be in mine. Jesus is coming. Come 2020, we'll have a house behind us. I'll show you if I'm here. But I know Jesus is coming. I can't even picture seeing a house behind us after all these years. So you want to know you're forgiven, right? There's the answer.